Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. I'm so glad to be with you again to bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. And we're teaching a powerful series right now called The Incredible Power of the Word. The Incredible Power of the Word. And I believe that through this series that we're teaching, there's going to be a hunger that develops in your soul like never, never before to to receive revelation from God's word, to study the word of God, to hear the word of God. God's word is Jesus in the earth. Jesus was the word that had become flesh. And when God's word becomes revelation on the inside of you and it begins to live itself through you, God's word becomes flesh in your life, and you are the manifestation of the body of Christ in the earth as the Word lives itself through you. Well, Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you bring forth this message in a way that each and every person could understand. I pray that you give us revelation. I pray that you speak through me. I pray that you speak right into the hearts of each and every person that listens to this message. And I thank you and I praise you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to apologize to those of you that watched the YouTube yesterday. The, the recording is there. The video drags a little bit. You move it along, it'll start moving again. But I was in a hotel, been going down to a city, small city or town that's not too far from where I live here in Germany. And uh, God is doing some great, great things. I, I believe that we're in the beginning of a revival with GG Ministries. We do have done a lot of ministry with them in the past and they with us. And now we continue to support each other in that way. And uh, God is, is doing something uh, special, powerful. And so, so I've been regularly going down there, being a part of that, ministering with them. And uh, and so I was in a hotel, and we don't have quite the live stream speeds in the hotel that we do here in foot, but uh, I wanted to get the message out, and so just bypass the, the video quality and listen to the audio quality, and yesterday's message would be a great, great blessing to you as we taught about letting God's Word dwell in us richly. Well, today's another day, and... You can open your Bible to John, the 15th chapter. John, the 15th chapter. It says, in John 15, in verse 7, If you abide in me, if you abide in me, that word abide again, you know, like other words in the King James Bible, it's an old English word. We wouldn't go around <laughs> saying it in our modern English today. But what it means, if you live in me, if you live in me, and that's what happened to you when you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The uh, beginning of this verse or chapter speaks about Jesus being the vine and us the branches. Well, when we were born again, we were plugged into the vine. We were plugged into life. We were plugged into heaven. God came to live on the inside of us. We were plugged into the tree of life. Jesus is that tree of life. We receive the Zoe life of God, God's nature, God's character. God came to live on the inside of us through the new birth. That's one of the first revelations I received in my life that changed my life. I'll never forget when I got the revelation about the Greek word for life, our English word life, and that's the Greek word zoe, which means to have literally the life of God, God's nature, God's character, God himself through the Holy Spirit living in us. And this is what Jesus is speaking of here. He says, if we live in him, well, we we live in him when we 
receive him as our personal savior that's really what it means to live that's to come alive before you receive jesus you had a nature of death on the inside of your spirit you were separated from god that's what death means for for a human being the word death always means separation it's separation from god for the unbeliever for the sinner because of the nature of death or the nature of sin that's on the inside of them and then there is uh, physical death, which is the spirit that is separated from the body. And then there's eternal death. And eternal death is the place that all those will go to that do not receive the Lord Jesus Christ during their lifetime. And so that's not something that we have to worry about anymore because we are alive in him. We have God's life in us. We're living in him. And Jesus said, if you abide or if you live in me, <laughs> you're alive in him. I'm alive in him. That's good news. God always has good things to say to us. If we live, it says here in verse 7, if you live in me, now notice this, and my words. Oh, this is good. And my words, here's that word again, abide, or we could say if my words live told you it's a living word god's word is a living word this is not just a word that's written down in pages to read for entertainment no literally this word was meant to live in you to come alive in you to produce things in you to produce things through you to produce fruit god kind of fruit and so God's word is so it's powerful. It comes into you. You get revelation. Revelation means it comes alive right then. Bam. In you. It's it, it's alive in you. It's alive in you. And bam, you're healed. It's alive in you. And you know exactly what to do in the situation. It's alive in you. And you go forth and God works himself through you. He speaks his word through you. Your actions become actions of the word, the living word, God's word. Just like you've got physical blood in your body that causes your body to every fiber and organ of your body to, to be alive physically. It's the same with the word of God. God's word comes alive in you and it releases spirit power into your soul and spirit power through your body. God's word becomes flesh. It's powerful. The incredible power of the word of God. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. This word ask could also be translated demand. And really, you could you could put it in both senses, because there are times that we ask if we're lacking wisdom. The word says that we ask the Lord and God gives us wisdom. He gives us direction. He shows exactly what to do. And the way that he'll show us is through his word. The Holy Spirit will bring into remembrance the word that you planted in your heart you, or you'll have the inward intuition you'll just have a sense on the inside well again that's the living word in you because the word says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of god the word says as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god paul said it seems good to me and the holy ghost well when these things happen in your life what happens that's literally god's word living itself through you god's living word it says you shall ask what you will well not only do you ask but there's also times you demand now you don't demand things of god god's already given you these things god's already blessed you you're not getting blessed you're already blessed but there's times that there's a thief out there and he'll try to steal the blessing from manifesting in your life and that's where you can take the word of God like a sword and you can use it as a sword and say, no, you don't, devil. This is God's will for my life. And you demand that he leave that area of your life. You demand sickness, leave. You demand any he heaviness or depression, leave. You demand confusion, leave. You demand fear, leave. You demand anything that is not of God. You have been given the authority. And you can speak the word of God. And remember, Jesus said that the things that you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. The things that you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. You have the power as the son of God to bind and to loose the attacks of the devil that come into your life and to walk in victory. 
And that's good news. And it's through the power of the living word. I mean, think about it. You know, somebody asked me the other day, well, what about angels? How do angels work in our life? Well, the Bible says that angels are sent forth as ministering spirits. It doesn't say they're sent forth to minister to us. Angels are not here to teach and to preach the word and to give us guidance uh, with our revelation of God's word. But angels are here as servants to work for us they are ministering spirits the bible says in hebrews 1 and verse 14 that are sent forth to minister for those that are heirs of salvation they go out there and and how do they do that well remember in the old testament the word says that the angels hearken or they listen to the word of god so the angels their ears are open and and when god speaks forth he is his word is going forth and they're listening and they do what the word of God is. What word is spoken? Well, what happens when you speak God's word? What happens when you speak God's will? The angels go forth and they do the work. They do the word. Wow. So there's a place of asking and there's a place of demanding. But how is it that these things will manifest? Number one, you abide in Jesus, you come alive in Jesus, and that's what gives you the legal right to do these things, and it, be, it causes you to be the seedbed for the Word. It opens you up where the revelation of the Word can come out of your spirit, can change your soul, and it changes your life. You're alive in Christ, and it activates who you are as a Christian. It's a powerful rhema word that activates from the logos, the written word, to the spoken, alive, living word in you, activating who you are, and you becoming a powerful son of God, a manifestation, daughter of God, a manifestation in this earth. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So what's going to happen? You ask because you know the word, and you know what you can ask for, and then you demand. Anything that the enemy is bringing into your life, you take the word of God, and you use that against him, and you go forth in victory. So if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, I mean, that in itself ought to motivate you to get into the word of God like never before and fill yourself. We say it. I say it all the time. People sometimes make a little bit of a joke about it because it's it is kind of funny. But you know what? It's a reality, too. I'm the one that's known as. The, uh, the word, the word, the word. <laughs> I say it all the time. Germans say, does word, does word, does word. Well, this is vision. This is the most important thing you can get in your life. And I cannot stress enough about how important it is. Praise God. In Acts 20 and verse 32, notice what this verse says. Acts 20 and verse 32. And this is powerful. This is a powerful scripture in the book of Acts. You know, it's, it's important. One of the things when you study the book of Acts, you see the first church. And the first church had, had, had some revelation, some New Testament revelation. And, uh, but, but the first church, there was a lot of testimony, testimony. There was a lot of healing, a lot of miracles, and, and those things were important. But you see later on that that church did not last and you see that, that that church, the, the church of Jerusalem, it, it would go in and out from grace to the law, grace to the law. And so later on, God raised another church up in the book of Acts, and God used that church literally to fulfill the commission that uh, he wanted for the gospel to go to the world. And it was later on that the, 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 the foundational revelation for the church came about who we are in Christ. Much more came through the Apostle Paul. And that church was established in Antioch, Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. And that church was the strongest church in the early days of the church age. Why was it so strong? Because it was founded on New Testament revelation. And I want you to notice what? Paul writes here in Acts the 20th chapter in verse 32. It says, and now, brethren, I commend you to God. And look at this, so important to the word of his grace. It's a word of grace. Well, what is the word of grace? It's the living, powerful word that empowers you. You don't have the ability by yourself 
to live this Christian life. You don't have the ability by yourself to do the works of God. You cannot energize this through your flesh. But when the rhema, living word of God, comes alive in you, wow, 30, 60, 100 fold in every aspect of God's nature in you comes forth. And when God starts living himself through you, that's grace, brother. That's being empowered by God, by an energy beyond yourself, a power beyond yourself. And that's what caused you to be powerful. That's why it's called the word of grace. God's word comes in you and it releases the grace of God in your life. And it says, and to the word of his grace, which is able, look at this. Wow, check this out. This is awesome. To build you up. <laughs> it's See right there, it builds you up. Well, you're already built up in the spirit. He's talking about you getting stronger and stronger in your soul. And he's talking about you manifesting in a stronger way out here in this natural life as a son or daughter of God. Wow. Build you up and give you an inheritance. You know what this is going to do? As God's word comes into you, your inheritance is going to start manifesting. No, you don't have to wait till you get to heaven for all these good things to manifest. You're already blessed, and the inheritance is in the blessing. And what it says is the word is going to bring this blessing forth into your life. You're blessed. I'm not, I don't never say, I'm getting blessed. Showers of blessings are coming upon me. No, I'm already blessed, and these things are coming out of me. They're manifesting in my life. You see the difference? I'm blessed bringing forth a blessing. I'm not somebody that's not blessed and then going to get blessed. No, I'm blessed, and I bring forth a blessing. And it's the Word of God in me that brings forth that blessing. I'm built up with His Word, and it manifests this inheritance that He's provided for me. It says, build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. That's me and that's you. We are set apart to be used by God. Well, that's all the time that we have for this message today. It has been powerful. And I look forward to being with you again tomorrow as I bring another message of faith, hope, and love. And I encourage you, share these videos. Share these videos with other people. It's, you know, our, our heart is to get the message out. This is the most important thing right here that you could share with anybody in your life is the Word of God. And so pass these messages on. Help us to get what God has given us out. That's so important. You know, we help people all the time. with. You know, when I, when I see ministers that have great, great messages and great, great ministries, I want to do everything I can to get behind them and to help them to get their ministries out. And it's not for their benefit, but it's because of the message and the revelation that they have that changes people's lives. And I want to get that message out. And so we ask you to help us to do the same thing. This is Mark Irvin. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love.